again, everyone, and welcome to Negotiating with Derek Arden. As you may know, Derek is a negotiation expert for 30 years. He had a brilliant career at Barclay Bank, where he learned on the heels of masters, the art of negotiation. He's also written 10 books, and he has a program called Monday Night Live with Derek Arden, which you are welcome to tune into. Today, we're going to talk about something that Derek invented, and those are the nego- is the negotiation scorecard. There are 12 items we'll talk about, six for this program and six coming up with the next one. Derek, welcome back. Tracy, thanks so much. Let's talk about number one. Well, you talk about 11 steps plus one extra. So let's talk about the first one, preparation. Give me your briefest speech on how important it is to be prepared. Well, it'll have to be very quick because preparation is one of the most important things that people can do when they're negotiating. And in fact, it's the most important thing that people can do, whatever they're doing in business, to be honest. But uh, preparing, understanding what you want to achieve, what's your best position, target position, walk away position, an alternative position, and then getting all the information and gathering all the information before you go into the negotiation. Tell me more about the preparation part. What are you, are you looking at the company or the individual or the situation? Be more specific about preparation of what? Well, I'm being all of those, actually, uh, finding out about the company, finding out about the deal that we're negotiating or the contract that we're negotiating, finding out what makes the people tick because often it's uh you it's that connection it's that rapport that you build uh and that trust because the trust comes out of that that you build uh over the meeting uh and then so that you've got that relationship if something goes wrong with the contract or whatever so it's it's all about um the deal the person the company and are they going to pay you or not actually because if you're going to sell something um the uh, it's um a deal's not a deal till the cash is in the bank yes indeed number two first impressions tell us about those well you don't get a second chance to make a first impression so it's just so important and i see so many people mess up mess up the first impressions they arrive late uh they're flustered they haven't prepared uh, they don't give a nice handshake. They're not very warm. They're a cold. They're cold individuals. When you're trying to uh, get a deal done, influence people, or persuade. So that's that's really really important. How you dress. And um, I interviewed a headhunter once, and she said to me, Derek, I look for four things automatically: eyes for energy, smile, uh, handshake, and shoes. And uh, I saw somebody out on those four items. <laughs> what do they say? Shoes make the man. It's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. It is very much so. I am interested about you talking about clothing because the world has changed so much. People are less casual. Do you think you should always wear a coat and tie as a man, always be more business dressed as a woman in negotiation, or should you match perhaps the culture of the company that you're negotiating with? I think you should match the culture of the company, but there's a golden rule, just dress one more notch above the person that you think you're trying to influence. I mean, you can always, I can always take my tie off, can't I, very quickly. I can always take my jacket off, which gives me uh, lots of freedom. And the same with women, you know, they can take their jacket off, can't they, if, if they dressed appropriately, so they can dress down. So um, it's pretty tricky but if you want to look expensive if you want to close an expensive deal i guess there's only one answer you've got to look expensive <laughs> amen yeah. Number three, asking good questions what is a good question good questions generally tracy begin with how or what you know how are we going to resolve this what are we going to do to sort this out and notice how short they are when they begin with how and what and a lot of people make a mis- the mistake of then asking a second question afterwards. So how are we going to resolve this? And then they go on to say, because we need to sort this and we need to sort that. How are we going to resolve this is a great question. And then this is what you do. You shut it. You zip it closed. And then you listen to what they're going to say. So preparing questions in advance is very important in the negotiations, and then you can structure almost the way you go through the uh, the questions. 
it, you're not winging questions. You're asking. No. But give us some more specific questions. How are we going to resolve this? What are some other effective questions to ask? Well, you you say you had a you you say you got a a price from another customer. Uh, what's that price? Can you share with me what the price is? You know, ask directly because if you're up against somebody else, then ask. Sometimes people will tell you. Sometimes people won't. Um, if you don't ask, you don't get. If you don't ask, they don't give you the opportunity to say yes or match the price, providing you believe them. But that's a business decision and a business judgment that you have have to make. So, you and know, tell, tell me about is, is also another similar one. Sorry. Tell me about, say that more, say more about that. Well, tell me, tell me about, about the issues at your factory. Tell me about the issues that have been causing the issues with, with the plant. Um, tell me about is another open question which gets the other pe people talking. When they're talking, they're giving you information. When I'm talking, I'm giving you information. Uh, we're not being deceitful here, but, but you know, let's be fair. We want to pick up as much information about this so we can make a good, solid business de decision, which will uh, stand the test of time. Mm, excellent. And let's finish off by talking about listening. Mm. Listening is one of the most difficult things people do. They think it's the easiest. They think they've got two ears and it's easy to listen, but active, disciplined listening when you're giving the person your whole attention is really difficult because we get head chatter, we get little people talking in our heads, we get distracted, we look at someone's tie or someone's dress and we think, oh, that's odd or that's like my girlfriend's or something like that, and we get totally distracted. Active, disciplined listening is sitting up properly, Full of full attention, no arms crossed. They say that uh, fifth, people with their arms crossed listen only to fifty percent of what you're saying. Can you believe that? I don't know whether these where these things come from, but you and I know there's something in it anyway. And and so yes, up upright listening, paying attention with your pen there. If you need to make notes, you don't need to make copious notes. You can make little notes i will i will i write down individual words that people might say well i probably couldn't do that and i'd write probably okay so you you probably could if you probably couldn't so listening to what people say and how they say it uh, is is really important and most people don't listen can i just tell you a very quick story love it do it please so let me ask you a question. How many animals of each species did Moses take into the ark? Don't answer that question because I asked that at conferences, that, that question, and most people think the answer's two. But, of course, Moses didn't have an ark. Noah had an ark. And if you'd been listening carefully, you'd have known that the answer was zero, which is a bit of fun. And if people groan and moan at me and everything else, but at the end of the day, you need to listen to every word. What's the meaning of every word? How does it come across? What's the person really saying? And keeping the radar on. And uh, next time we'll talk about body language because sometimes you have to watch, you have to listen with your eyes and your ears because there's four things you get to listen with. Well, we'll look forward to that. Thank you, Derek. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Tracy.